But the tension isn't just between Gates and McCarthy. Now the frustrations within the House Republican Conference are spilling out into the open with various members calling their party dysfunctional and calling the process painful. Joining me now is the former Republican congressman from Pennsylvania, Charlie Dent. He's the executive director and vice president of the congressional program at the Aspen Institute. He's a senior policy advisor for DLA Piper. With us also is the former Republican governor of South Carolina, Mark Sanford. He also previously served as a congressman. He ran for the presidency in 2020. He's the author of the book, Two Roads Diverged, A Second Chance for the Republican Party, the conservative movement, and that nation, our cell, and ourselves. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. I'm going to start with you. Um, Governor, because you wrote a book about this. You wrote a book about that second chance. There are, I don't know, at least five and maybe 20 uh, Republicans in the House who stem from where you came from who are not interested in the stuff you wrote about in your book. They're not looking for a second chance. They are not looking for a compromise. They're not looking for a deal and not even apparently looking to advance conservative principles. They just seem to be looking to stop the place from running for now. That's a fair assessment. I mean, I, my, my take on Matt Getz is that he's sort of a fraudulent, showy peacock who just wants to, you know, be out and on the airwaves. Um, same with Marjorie uh, Taylor Greene. I, mean, I, I just don't get where they're coming from. I, I think there is a legitimacy to a fight on a government shutdown, on, on where are we going with spending, where are we going on border, going on a, a number of, I think, really important issues. But to your point, I'd have to see it. Uh, some of these folks, I, I think, want to fight generally. I think they want to show. And uh, at some level, this isn't about a government shutdown. It's about taking uh, you know, Kevin out of office, I suspect. Uh, Charlie, th there is, as, as the governor says, and as Charlie, uh, as, as Don Bacon, and I talked to him about an hour ago, he says, you know, 33 trillion debt, increasing debt. That's a legitimate discussion to be had. And Congress does have legitimate spaces for that discussion to be held and those debates to be held. And Republicans do control Congress right now. What's happening here? What, Don Bacon called this dysfunctional. What's the problem here? The governor has just said uh, some of them want to just take Kevin McCarthy out. Some of them just want to be peacocks and be on TV. But you're not, we're not having the legitimate discussion about $33 trillion in debt. We're actually having a different discussion, sadly. Yeah, I saw your conversation with Don Bacon. He's absolutely right. We do need to have this conversation. I would also say, look, many of the conversations we want to have about uh, the, unsustain uh, the unsustainable fiscal trajectory of the country needs to occur outside the appropriations process. It needs to be dealt with on these mandatory programs, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. That's totally separate. Now, I served on the Appropriations Committee. One reason I like serving on the Appropriations Committee is because it was the only committee in Congress that had to do something every year. Uh -huh. That is fund the government, regardless of who was in, in power. Uh, and so what's happening is you have five to 10 of these members who simply want to blow the place up. Again, this is not a difficult, this is not a difficult issue to resolve. All you need is for Kevin McCarthy to talk to Hakeem Jeffries to get a few votes to help him pass the rule to bring up the, the uh, CR and, uh, and then to vote for the bill. They send it to the Senate. The negotiations going on in the House among Republicans you know, that, that's going nowhere. I mean, even if they were to pass that, and I don't think they can, it's going to go to the Senate. It's dead on arrival. And then the Senate will probably send back a bipartisan bill with over 70 votes. And then, then, then the leadership in the House has to make a decision. Do they take that up, pass it with overwhelming bipartisan support, or do they allow the, the government to go into shutdown, which will be enormously disruptive? This is not hard. I've been through these shutdowns 2013. I left Congress just the time of the last one in 2018. I mean, this... This is so unnecessary, and it does not address the fiscal trajectory of the country. In fact, it's going to cost the government money to shut down. So this makes absolutely no sense what these characters, uh, these, hard, these hard hardliners are doing. It makes no sense what they're doing. Uh, it's just enormously disruptive. Mark, let's talk about this because, and I, I want to ask you, as I've discussed with you in the past, about the characterization of who these hardliners are now versus who you were uh, when you were in Congress. I don't even know how to describe them anymore. I don't know far right's the right word because I'm not even sure this is an ideological issue. They're 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 like pig pen. They just have chaos swirling around them. But but tell me about this because you were there at a time when you represented a group of people who wanted less government involvement, lower government regulation. Uh, lower taxes and, and, and a cut to the deficit. But I remember covering that, and I don't remember thinking you were all nuts. 
No, I, I, again, we, we've hinted at it. Charlie just did. You have. I have. I mean, there is a conversation that needs to take place about a $33 trillion debt, about borrowing. You, you, you talk about a broken government, borrowing 25 cents of every dollar we're spending in Washington. And if you did that in a business or household, you'd be in real trouble. Our government, as a consequence, is in real trouble. And we're kicking the can down the road on that. But, I mean, I, I think going to your point, I, I mean, the fact that Chip Roy could be viewed as sort of a moderate these days when he comes out with a proposal that would keep government going in exchange for an 8% cut in, in, in government, is, and yet that's not good enough, says we're in crazy world. And yet I, I think part of it is, I, I, again, this weird time that we're in. Part of it's the composition of the Congress. I mean, you have the, the, the lowest margin of, of, of control that we've seen in the last 90 years. In fact, this is the fifth, you know, smallest majority in all of Congress. So, I mean, you, you, I mean, why Kevin wanted the job in the first place, it was guaranteed <laughs> to be tough with that kind of working majority. Um, but, but he is there and you have people that they perceive it to be in their political best interest to be making the show that they're doing. They're responding to their, their districts, oddly enough, and it, it is a measure of what degree of desperation is out there. It, it's, again, a, it's a, how in the world did Trump come to office? Well, you're looking at it. Uh -huh. People are very frustrated out there, and you see this sort of venting going on now at government shutdown time. Charlie, let's go through that math uh, that, that uh, the governor was just talking about. Uh, 222 Republicans, they need 218 to pass anything. There are at least four uh, recalcitrant uh, people in the Matt Gates group. Uh, and so Hakeem Jeffries, as you mentioned, is going to be key to this thing. And we have it on good authority that uh, Rep Democratic leadership is talking to uh, Kevin McCarthy and saying, you know, we'll help you if you if you need to get this over the finish line. Don Bacon said the same thing. We'll, we'll, we're going to need to do this with Democrats. But not if 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 McCarthy makes a deal that involves Democrats signing on to this thing, it is going to upset somewhere between five and 20 uh, Republicans who are going to call for the his ouster as speaker. And my response to that, Ali, is so what? So what that these five to 20 are going to be unhappy? So who cares? I mean, th what you need to do now is marginalize them. Cut your deal with Hakeem Jeffries. Pass the bill and let those other guys throw a tantrum. Let them, you know, they're they're isolated. There are 222 House Republican members, and we're worried about five to 20 who want to blow up the place. I think you know Kevin McCarthy is in a very unenviable uh, predicament. But I would also say, with respect, that he has to stop appeasing those five to 20. Don't put them on the Rules Committee. Don't put them on the Appropriations Committee. Don't lower the, the threshold to vacate the chair. These are all sops to them. Don't start an impeachment inquiry. He needs to stop appeasing that group and deal with the, uh, the, the vast majority of his conference that does want to govern. That's the right way to deal with this. And frankly, like I said, he could have this thing. They could pass a CR in five minutes if they wanted to. It would be very easy and send it to the Senate with over 300 votes. That's what I think they could do right now. But they have to be willing to stand up to that fringe and tell them where to stick it. And they should stick it to them right now. Mark, it sounds reasonable, but tell me how that plays out. Because the bottom line is Kevin McCarthy will not remain speaker if those people uh, do that. So what, what does happen? Who leads? How do the, the other people, the vast majority of the Republican Party, plus the 20 or so who won, like Don Bacon, in districts that Joe Biden uh, won as president, how do they retake power of the House Republican Conference? Well, I don't know that the Don Bacons will, but but I, what I do know, to your point, is the reason you're seeing the gymnastics that you're seeing played out with Kevin McCarthy is he knows the writing on the wall that you know if he has to go out and get a a swath of Democratic votes and pass it with basically a, a, a number of sort of uh, compromises, which is not a bad word, um, they're going to come after him, and he may not survive at this go-round. And so this is all about maintaining power. That, that That's what this whole theater ultimately is about. It's not about government spending. It's not about the border. It's not about the Ukraine. It's about whether or not Kevin McCarthy maintains mm -hmm. power.